Mike's Daily Podcast. Well, what a weekend, How huh? Did you have a good weekend? Uh, somebody got put into the freaking Supreme Court. He's already got his office set up, and he's got four clerks, legal clerk people, that are all women. Is he trying to cover up? Is he trying to atone for something? I don't know. How are you doing? I'm Mike. Mike's Daily Podcast. My name's not Tone, not Tone Loke. I'm not trying to atone, because this is F F F F S O. Mike's Daily Podcast. 1719 1719 1719. I'm your host. I'm Mike Matthews, and I'm feeling fine, though I've had no sleep because my dog kept waking up and sh- shaking his head and doing his thing, and he's going through a thing, and just. So I have to sing a little bit. About it. He heard a nail. He knocked off a nail. So Mike's Daily Podcast. If you listen to the show a lot, you hear all my dog problems. So now he's got a nail that's very sensitive, and so Mike's I have covered it up daily. with some like band aids, Neosporin. Yeah. Trying to help that. A vet told me to do that years ago. Hey, Madam Rutabaga, Valentina, Bison, Bentley are going to stop by. Brocav, welcome to Brocav land. We're in the Brocav world. So here's the thing. I know Republican conservative talk show hosts are going to tell you, oh yeah, we're going to have a Brocav wave. We're going to have a red wave in November. Because look who just walked in. Because look at what the Democrats tried to do. With Brett Kavanaugh trying to assassinate his character, blah, 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 blah. No, it ain't going to work like that because you got what you wanted. You got the gold ring. You got him into the Supreme Court. All those fatty, fat, fat white guys who go and eat fast food all the time and, oh, look who else walked in. Oh, wait a minute. We don't eat fast food all the time. We eat good stuff that we buy from the supermarket. Let's take a look at the box. Yeah, everything they buy is processed. They eat processed food, high in salt. They're fatty, fat, fat white men. And they got what they wanted. So now they're going to go back and sit on the couch and not vote and, and be fat. And meanwhile, all the energized women... And the men who love women, who uh, support women, who listen to women, who grew up with a mother that... And here's today's podcast picture. Worked her butt off to raise him and bring food to the table and worked her butt off and saw her be discriminated against, saw the misogyny of the world. And now, even though Basil... Even though he, she t- told me that she hates the Me Too movement. That's not the point. The point is that at the end of this run-on sentence, that Brett Kavanaugh got in and that is fired up the Democrat base. It had already been fired up. The Republican base only got fired up for that wee teeny little moment. When they saw, oh, maybe this Me Too movement ran amok, and oh, that poor Brett Kavanaugh, and oh, I was listening to Rush Limbaugh, and he told me that this is really bad, and blah, blah, blah. Now, it's done. They can go back to their soccer mom life. There's some women that are not, let's just say, they don't care about their rights. All they care about is Brett Kavanaugh, because they've been listening to the whole thing with the... I ran out of steam on that longest sentence. Oh, wait. That was an empowering nap. Doctor Who was awesome yesterday. The new Doctor Who is a woman. Woo! Jodie Whittaker. Great job. Yes. Bizarre episode. Some kind of weird thing in the space... The kids walking through the forest And there's these little lines that pop up but It kind of reminded me of Stranger Things Because there's All that stuff going on in the forest In the dark And they kind of did that Because Chris Chinball Crinball Is that his name? Chris Chinball He's the new showrunner The new guy that oversees the whole storyline of Doctor Who It was Stephen Moffat for like 10 years practically 
So now we got this new guy. And I went back and I watched an episode that Chris had written, one of the early episodes he had written. And it was the episode where the doctor comes back. Matt Smith played the doctor in this episode. And it was the Karen Gillen, Karen Gillen, the red haired lady, and her husband, Arthur Darville. And he comes to stay with them for a couple days because there's this weird thing going on where all of a sudden there's these cubes everywhere. All these cubes. And they, the show, they kind of let you know that there was a slow invasion that took place. And these cubes just sat around and nobody could get open the cubes or anything. But they were everywhere. And people used them as doorstops, as paperweights. They were these shiny black cubes. So... One day, all of a sudden, the cubes come to life and they're doing things like killing people and stuff. So that was an interesting episode Chris did years ago. And now he actually mans the show. And now there's all this interesting stuff out in the forests. These There was a strange warrior man who, when he killed people, he took a tooth out and stuck it to his face. That kind of weird stuff. And then the doctor now is a woman. And she's... Being very Doctor Who like, so it was it was wonderful and an interesting supporting cast that's going to be following her as well. And no TARDIS through the whole episode, not a single TARDIS to be seen. So I'm hoping that that's going to be some kind of cool reveal where the TARDIS maybe is no longer a big blue box. Maybe they're going to change it a bit. D- did somebody say a big pink box, please? Ah, uh, maybe that be. Maybe in a pink box would be interesting. But whatever. The point is that... I'm really busy right now. Bringing you this great show today, and look at all these people that walked into Cafe Anyway. Hello, Mega Mice. It's Mata Bruder Mega, and I watched the Doctor Who. It's very good. Ooh. Hello there, Mike. This is Valentino, the parking attendant. And the- this is Vice and Bentley. Do you know that? I just drove in the cafe anyway. Do you know that? Anyway. 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 Oh, my, my, my. Thank you. Welcome to the world of Bro Cav. I hope this isn't a tone deaf show. Let's be a tone. Did you like the pictures of the boats that I had on the last uh, podcast picture? It's pretty nice. Hey, let's go to Facebook now. Go into Facebook now. Go into Facebook. Let's go. Nobody on Facebook that I give a crap about. Two people here, though I have no idea who they are, are having birthdays yesterday, and I don't care. God, I really hate Facebook. Oh, it is the most pointless, useless piece of crap. Drop the the, just Facebook. Stock keeps dropping. They keep they keep having more and more security breaches. You know, we have a basic responsibility to protect people's data. And if we can't do that, then we don't deserve to have the opportunity to serve people. But meanwhile, over on Instagram, also owned by Facebook, look at all these likes. Oh, it's my ex-mother-in-law. She's liked a bunch of things I posted. Podcast pictures. And then, let's see, sometimes a listener of the show, Christy, looks like she liked one of my pictures. Where the one I was dancing with the horses. That was a funny one. Let's see. The stories, those are always fascinating. Especially if they have audio. Let's see. Oh, that's a nice picture. Of my ex-mother-in-law. Let's see. When your man releases the hottest cover ever. What? Who the hell is... Oh, it's one of these women that does the duck face. That's not not my ex-mother-in-law. This girl named Amy Jane. I don't even know why I'm Facebook friends with her. But she is just doing the total duck face. I think I'm going to unfollow this woman. Because that's not a good... Don't do your duck face, people. That's all I'm saying. And... Alright, somebody went to Levi's Stadium. That's great. 
this person goes to a million uh, concerts and <sighs> football things and sports things every day. You know what I did this weekend? I went to Half Moon Bay with the wonderful Basil the Boxer and my lovely lady friend. And I had drank some Phil's coffee and I got all of a sudden just majorly the, the just the rev me up. Holy crap. Phil's coffee. Wow. And I get off of work and I text my lady friend and say, hey, you want to go to Half Moon Bay? And we took Basil the Boxer and had a great time. And then I ate a delicious sandwich at the sandwich place I like to go to. I never took my lady friend there. She got some chili fries. They were delicious. It was a fun day. Half Moon Bay's got all these pumpkins everywhere. So if you want to see pumpkins, go to Half Moon Bay right now. And you will see them. Okay? All right. As we go outside a cafe anyway, we're bringing Mike Staley podcast somewhere in Podcaster Valley. Did I ever tell you my Ed Bagley Jr. story? Well, Ed Bagley Jr. showed up in Ventura, California, where I used to live. And Ventura was having a eco-friendly... This is when eco... eco environment... Environmental green... All those catchphrases and mm, words, buzzwords were being shot around. And that was in the very beginning stages of that. And we were, they, they did a big street fair around the summertime. And one of the streets was closed off in downtown Ventura. They had a bunch of cars that were eco friendly. It was a car show with eco friendly cars. So there was a car that ran on bio. Fuels. Remember, that was a big thing. That's gone away. It's still big in Europe, but the U.S. just... Who does that anymore? Yeah, what I do is I stop by the fast food place where the fat whitey white men go, and I get all the fry oil, and I turn it into gas for my car. I turn it into biodiesel. Oh, that's not like an easy process or anything. It's not an easy process at all. It takes a while. Until they make that easier, that's not going to be a thing, I don't think, here in America anyway. Because we're fat and we're white and we sit on couches here in America. That's my point. Anyway, Ed Bagley Jr. is standing there walking around looking at cars there. And I go up to him and I go, hey, you were awesome in a mighty wind. And he goes, oh, that's great. Have you met my daughter? And then he walked away. (laughs) And I talked to his daughter, who was, I think, about... 10 years younger than me and I asked him some questions about I asked her some questions about Ed Bagley Jr. and she answered and I remember I just asked her about the electric car stuff because at that point the electric car had gone it had been about a year since that the death of the electric car movie came out where Ed Bagley Jr. was in it giving the eulogy at a big funeral for the death of the electric car but it has since come back with a vengeance the help of Tesla. Wasn't that interesting though that whole Brett Kavanaugh hearing was in such a tiny, tiny room and all those people that hated each other had to be shoved into that tiny little space and Chuck Grassley, oh, that Iowa senator who was a running the whole thing and he was, I don't know, if you know what we're talking about here, because you're from the elite media, you know. And I, I, I don't care for the wall. God, Chuck Grassley. And then, of course, the Lindsey Graham. Here's my understanding. If you lived a good life, people would recognize it. Like the American Bar Association has the gold standard. You know, speaking of the American Bar Association, they, uh, I prefer the American Honky Tonk Bar Association by Garth Brooks. But that freaking thing has approved every sort of idiot. And I think you basically just pay a bunch of money and smoke a bunch of cigars with a bunch of idiots. And you get approved by the American Bar Association. So I don't know what the big freaking deal is about the American Bar Association... Oh, I talked to... I went to a cool party over the weekend. Someone's birthday party. And the... It was in Richmond, which is right next to Berkeley there. 
And may I just say, lots and lots of liberals. It was very refreshing. And we were all sitting there kind of bemoaning the whole Brett Kavanaugh thing. And this uh, one guy was like, yeah, oh, oh, we were talking about conservative talk show hosts. And about Hugh Hewitt, who I've mentioned many times on this show. And he was saying that um, this guy, that he had been to a party or some kind of a conference with Hugh Hewitt. And it was basically all these presidential script writers. And he goes, you have never met so many egotistical, just idiots just hanging out, smoking their cigars, acting like they're the biggest, hottest crap on the planet. And, uh... Hugh Hewitt Just He All he's talking about now is Yeah Are we gonna And he can't talk It's like he's He's got his jaws Falling off or something And he's Yeah are we gotta get uh, The whole thing Get the Republicans back in office blah, 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 blah. So that's gonna be Oh there's a Mary Tam tribute She played one of the doctor's companions In the 70s For one season But she sadly passed away A few years back I'm looking for a Chuck Grassley thing. I thought I had a Chuck Grassley thing already there. I just want to show you. Oh, yes. And then he said that women should be out of... That, that they, they probably shouldn't do the whole... Where's that quote? Oh, the, I hate when they do this. They show you a bunch of talking heads. <laughs> Did you hear that white man thing? Person that believes in the principles of due process... The presumption of innocence and readiness to serve our... I don't think that women should be on the Supreme Court because they can't get up early enough to do the whole thing what you do with the Supreme Court. the fact that we... The minute I read about who the person was in the Feinstein letter... The Feinstein! Ford, I read oh. about her name in the paper. We got on it right away to provide the form she wanted. And in turn, we provide the same forum. Okay, now go back to your cornfield now. Over there into Iowa. Oh. Be quicker than that. You got to be quicker than that. Go back to the Iowa farm. I was once in Iowa in 1983. And I was there pulling the beans. Because you got to walk up and down the corn stalk field and pull the beans out. Because if the beans grow where the corn does, then you don't get your corn growing there. And the Brett Kavanaugh don't get approved. Mom, who would disagree with everything I just said. Mom uh, said, women should just kick men in the balls. What's the big deal? If, it, if a guy is doing something they don't like, kick him in the balls. The understated balls. Men have balls for a reason so women can kick them. Just go along. That's apparently what we've learned on today's show. Just give them a good thump. And all will be well. Because of that. Thank you. There were 259 selfie deaths between 2011 and 2015. 17. So in that six year period, uh, 259 selfie deaths. Okay. So. What has that taught us? There are people that just are way too into themselves and do stupid things and get killed. I don't know. 259 people. This, it's sad. No one should die for any reason. Especially stupid reasons like that. But it happens. And be careful. Don't be taking the selfie. Look, be aware where you are. Don't back up over a cliff. While you're taking a selfie I guess that's what I'm telling you And that thought I'm leaving you Hey in the podcast picture today Nah If we're gonna go now to the podcast picture Oh I think I drew a picture of the Benita the Rodeo Queen Is she out here? Hi Mark It's Benita the Rodeo Queen How y'all doing? <laughs> My horse Nilly And I hate Brocave Okay Brocave Mountain Thank you Yeah Mark I'll kick you in the balls. No, that's okay. No need for that. All right. Bye, all bye. There she goes. Ouch. She did kick me in the balls before she left, just for the fun of it. Ha 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 ha. Oh, that was hilarious, wasn't it? <laughs> and may I say, 
that Geico commercials can be pretty funny. Like the one I saw over the weekend of the guy he, talking about how great he felt after the, buying Geico or whatever it was. And he said it made him feel like when you're mowing a lawn and you have that one last strip yet left and you and yet you have to mow that lawn yet. That's a that's an Iowa thing. You say yet all the time. You put yet at the end of sentences. So you got one little strip you gotta mow yet, and so you go and you mow that yet. And so yeah, he and he apparently mows it and he feels great, so You've got to be kidding me. What is the matter with you? Something must be wrong with you. I thought that was funny. But the, oh, and the guy in the time machine. That was pretty cool. The kid's like, hey, give me. Oh, that was Doritos. Wrong one. Okay. Well, it's not my fault. But Progressive has the best commercials. Like they had this one where the, you hear this. He, the guy goes, and now the worst commercial ever. And you hear this guy say, when I'm looking for the car insurance I gotta go and I gotta do this and then the the announcer voice comes back on and says a man try, an actor trying to be a plumber on the radio bad commercial and what's funny is this one radio station I work for they hired this guy one of their voice guys does this car commercial and he's been doing it for years and he he does this quote unquote acting like he's this guy of the street. Hey, Hank here. You should buy a car. For, and it's the worst. I don't know what he's trying to do. This guy, he cannot do voices. He cannot do characters. And it's sad. You know who can do a great character voice? My lovely lady friend. She can do a nerd. A really good nerd impression. So let's hear it for the nerds. Let's hear it for the... Very funny. Man, boy, let's hear it for the... And I talked about Denise Williams on a previous show and how I knew her son. And in fact, one time I was riding bikes near her house and my I spilled out on my bike. I crashed. And um, I had the temporary amnesia. And my friend brought me because he was friends with Denise Williams' son. And we went over to their house and I sat on her couch for a while. And that was Denise Williams lived there. And Denise Williams had the huge hit with Let's Hear It For The Boy from Footloose. And I had no idea who she was at the time, but this was back in the early, early 80s. Okay, that's I'm done with stories. I had my Ed Bagley Jr. story, my Denise Williams story. I think we're done. So enjoy the rest of your Monday. Oh, God, one last thing. Somebody said to me over the weekend, Hey, I want to start doing a podcast. It wasn't Chuck Grassley now, but it was some other guy. And he goes, I want to do a podcast. Do you make a lot of money doing podcasts? You've been doing it a long time. And I laughed and I laughed. I went, ha! I don't make any money doing a podcast. Oh, you do it so you're just a, a hobby, huh? It's just a hobby, huh? It's just a hobby, Huh. Like catching butterflies. Huh. Some people. Here's the thing. If you want to do a podcast, I've always said this. You should do a podcast. We need more voices on the internet in the world to overtake all the crazy Hugh Hewitt idiot voices that we've had on the radio for years. I love that. But you've got to stick to it. You've got, You've got to, to be, be kidding, kidding me. me. You've got to stick to it, and you can't just do one and then give up. Like those people I was talking about that were that were asking me for help on doing a podcast, they've given up already. They did it one time. That's fine. That's like people that say, I'm going to make a movie, and they film like two minutes of it and then just give up. You've got to stick to it and do it every week at least. You can't just do it once and then walk away and then... Oh. But you know that. Next show, it's going to be the wonderful Shelly Shuhart, Floyd the Floorman, and John Deere the Engineer. Thanks for listening. Oh, FYI, you can make money doing a podcast if you get a million sponsors that you play at the beginning of a podcast where you have five minutes worth of sponsors. This podcast is brought to you, blah, 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 blah. If you listen to a podcast like that, stop. Stop listening to those podcasts because it is an insult to you that they put all those commercials at the beginning of a podcast. At the very least, fast forward. There's a fast forward button on your player 
your podcast player, no matter what kind of thing you're listening to through. Fast forward through that. Please do that for me. Thank you. Mike's Daily Podcast is written and produced and performed by Mike Matthews. His podcast is super easy to find. Download or listen to his show and read his blog at mikesdailypodcast.com. Email Mike now at mikesdailypodcast at gmail.com. See you tomorrow. Bye.